Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome to another edition of one of Lately's live interview webinars. And I'm Kate Bradley Chernis. I'm the CEO of Lately. And with me, I have the esteemed Brian Kramer. Welcome, Brian Kramer, everyone. Hi, Brian. Hey, how are you doing? I'm pretty darned awesome. Um, so I know that a lot of people joining you know you already a little bit. Um, and of course, you know, we at Lately love and know you very well. But let me do the quick intro just so we can wow them with your amazing um, bio. So for those of you who don't know, Brian Kramer is nothing short of a marketing badass. Um, not only is he a social media business strategist and a global keynote speaker, he's had a couple of best-selling books. He's been a CEO of some really successful companies. He's got uh, 350,000 social fans. I mean, the list of his accolades go on and on. And really what we're going to focus on today is um, one of those, one particular accolade, which is um, Brian instigated the H2H or human to human business movement in, in both marketing and social. And that's a little bit about the focus we want to drill down on for today's session. Sound good? It sounds great to me. And what's cool about this is that we get to work together. So this is like fun and work together all combined. I love it. Bam, bam. They pay us for this. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and of course, like talking about being human, uh, I have these, these uh, curtains or shades and they've got these little dots in them and the light at this time of morning comes in and it, it makes a perfect uh, mark on my chest. And eventually within 10 minutes, it'll be all over my face. So I can't wait for that. Fantastic. I was noticing <laughs> I was noticing you wearing your uh, Tiger Woods red shirt today. <laughs> uh, it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, it'll be super fun. So so welcome, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, and let's just sort of get into it. Let's talk about I mean, first for, for folks who don't know, like, what is H2H? What is human to hum human? Just give us the basics. Yeah, sure. Um, I uh, um, well, it, it's changed over the years. It's, it's completely changed since the first time that I actually started using it, which was about 15 years ago when we first started our agency. Um, then it was more about uh, he, a human experience. Um, and it's kind of neat how it's kind of evolved. Um, and it's actually evolved, I think, past where I originally intended. It's kind of like taken on its own meaning and, and I've been along for the ride, if you will. Um, when I first spoke it on stage at um, in San Francisco, when like it really kind of took off, um, it was a neat, really neat experience. My friend Ted Rubin was there in the audience. He was the heading up the um, the whatever you call it, the master of ceremonies, or what, you know the um, the uh, guy that the guy with the microphone. Um, so he uh, he 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 saw the screen when I had it up, and the idea and the concept behind it was that it um, that that with social media at the time, which was fairly new, and social media still is fairly new. It's not that old. It's not like as old as the printing press. Um, it it actually um, allowed us to have uh, communication with the customer. So we could, anybody in any company, if they wanted to, if they were allowed to, could go out and have communication with the customer which is, is, is like a totally new epiphany, you know, experience, like all these companies going, oh my God, what's gonna happen if the customer says something we don't want them to say, now we can't control the narrative. Um, they get to be, um, have an open voice about our brand and about our product. So it, this whole new paradigm shift, I think shifted our entire way of marketing. Um, it opened up so many different channels and so many different, you know, things just like, just like lately. I mean, lately, because of social media, because of communication and the way that we can communicate back and forth with our customers, that changes everything. So um, so that's what H2H &H is all about, is is having that conversation. And 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 I do believe that that conversation is stronger than than any ad you put out or any, um, you know, piece of marketing that you put out. That conversation is the strongest uh, form of marketing that you can have. So, um, so that's where HH &H was born. And just to anchor folks even more, like to get more basic. So there's B two B, there's B two C. Like these are terms thrown around a lot. And so H two H is a riff on that, right? So instead of talking business to business or business to customer, human to human is the idea here, right? 
Yeah, I, I made a lot of friends when I said that on, in the book. Um, but there's no, there's no more B two B or B two C. I I found out there there really are haters in this world, and and I got to meet them. Um, awesome. So that's cool. But that's all right because it got them kind of thinking about their own job. And it's interesting when you say there's no B two B or B two C. I'm not taking down on the fact that the processes inside of a company doesn't operate differently in a B2B or a B2C world. Of course, selling retail is different than selling to a person or selling to business. Um, but on the outside, in the in the real world, customers don't see it that way. They see it all the same way. And so um, so how you operate internally, sure, have at it and you know, look at it differently. But externally, the the formula is the same. Right. And it's because, and I mean, I think I'm, I'm going to put some words in your mouth a little bit here, but as we know, marketing is emotion based, right? And so just going to the heart of the matter and, and admitting that up front, right? Knowing that this is the case, that we need emotion to connect with people. People pay with their wallets. They pay based on how they feel. So let's talk to them as humans in the marketing of the company um, to leverage that, inspire that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you're um you're really good at it you do that all the time on the on our channel which is oh, what i have a good coach <laughs> <laughs> yeah it didn't take you very long though you're like whoa if just so other... being... <laughs> yeah so everybody knows that brian kramer is a is a consultant for lately um he's a team member but the you know he works yeah, for it, <laughs> and it's um so it you know it's one of those things where like what you're doing um what you're doing, you're putting up, just so everybody knows, you're putting up videos on the page and, um, and, and being real and open and honest and authentic and having these real dialogues and people actually like engage, not, not to say that why wouldn't they engage with you? But the, the ironic part is that it's on a Facebook page and Facebook pages in, in Facebook, the algorithm is no videos compared to, you know, most other pages. When you scroll through, it's like up one like, or, maybe one engagement on a post here and there. So, um, so, so be, so the test proves itself that being human wins. Yeah. I mean, this isn't an interview about me, but what I, the next question I was going to ask was, <laughs> although I'm, it's hard for me to shut up was like, let's talk about some real life examples of human to human expression in marketing. Um, and, what I'm curious about is like, so for me personally, there's, there's a fine line. Obviously I go pretty far over, over the line a little bit on, on being human and sharing the story. Cause I think people want to know what's behind the curtain of being an entrepreneur. They do want to know that's what they tell us. Um, but that might be different if I'm a bank, for example. So can you talk about different ways that you've seen companies um, express H2H? Yeah. Um, sure. No problem. There's, there are several companies that, well, not just several, there, there are a whole bunch of companies that do it really well. Um, one, one of which that I've run across is, um, is actually Adobe. Um, I think Adobe is a great, great uh, use case because when, when I have had issues in the past, I've, I've tweeted out. I always test a brand. My, my wife makes fun of me because I walk into stores and I test them from inside the stores by tweeting them from the store to see like how is their social media. Um, and I don't do it as much anymore, but I do do it quite often. Like I'll do it, if I'm sitting near a brand and I see a brand, I'll tweet at them. And I'll just be like, you know, how's their social media? Mm -hmm. um, it's probably not fair, but um, but I like seeing how, how like the psychology behind it and if, what they do and who their social media manager is. And um, and when I, anyway, when I, when I tweeted at Adobe, because we had an issue with an installation of an Adobe suite, um, I got like four or five tweets back, um, and they were all from uh, they were all from employees of Adobe. And then I looked at their profiles, and it was like, you know, one was an engineer, one was in HR, one was in um, wow. marketing, and nobody was from support. And it, and I was like, oh my god, the company lets anyone reply back to anyone, and if they can help them, help them. And I thought, I, I thought that was really amazing because most companies have a social media policy mm -hmm. and they say, here's what you can say, here's what you can't say. And if it's customer service, then our customer service handle will handle it. Don't handle it yourself. We don't want to screw it up. Um, and that may be right for some companies and that's fine. But 
Um, but the fact that they let people actually answer the question and they all helped me out together on this one problem. And I was like, this is amazing. You know, um, that, that is really cool. The, the other one is, um, is just about any brand. Like, um, uh, like I'm going to miss Virgin America a lot, but, um, but Virgin would reply to just about every single tweet. Like, here's the thing that they did that, that like, boggled my mind. I was on my way to, on my way to, in a trip, on a trip to New York and, um, and, or sorry, it was to Florida. And I, and I said that I, um, I was excited to speak at a conference on, on my favorite, uh, airline in, uh, it was like 20,000 feet up in the air with coffee. And I had a picture of my coffee next to the Virgin logo and I had tweeted it out, um, mm -hmm. again, in a brand, sending a text, sending a tweet, seeing what happens. And, they replied back and said, have fun at the IBM conference where oh you're God. keynoting. We are <laughs> going to be rooting you on. And then they attached a screenshot of a coffee next to a computer in their social media room. That's incredible. And I was like, I was like, you guys win. You, you just won like that. Yeah. Just win. And, and so then I end up putting their screenshot and their tweet up in my keynote the next day in front of 2000 people. And guess who wins? They do because they, yeah. they they do this kind of stuff all the time. If you tweet at, I don't know if they do it anymore because of where Virgin is, but I used to just tweet them all the time. Now, here's the thing. They went beyond our conversation. They actually went online and looked up my name to see where I was speaking because I never told them what conference I was speaking at. So they actually were doing active listening. And I think that's a skill set that every social media person could really learn out there. Not just social media, like every marketer. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, I'm thinking about the barrier. Oh, by the way, I'm coming in in stereo. Um, I think it's through your computer. You're coming in in stereo? Uh-oh. Yeah. Here, I'll put some headphones on. Let's see if we can correct that. OK, cool. It just started happening. It wasn't happening before. Now it seems to be so good. We're having a, another human moment. I know we're so human. And by the way, the um, jewels are, are glistening across your chest and it looks great. See that? Yeah. It's awesome. Over the course of the half an hour, I'm going to have different ways of wearing them. It's like Star Trek, you know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, a couple of things that you brought to mind here is one, like an inter internal policies of accessibility of um, company employees being able to like help customers and speak on behalf of the company which you know, I'm sure a lot of CEOs would bristle at the thought of that. Um, and it's something that we we try to enforce here at Lately, right? Like, so um, I think it's it's sort of a top-down deal, right? So I, be, I feel like at Lately, we encourage each other to help each other internally, right? And that bleeds out to how we treat our customers at the same time. And I'm wondering if that's probably, I mean, you may not know this, but I wonder if that's just part of the policy people have. like. You know how can how can a company kind of really institute that sort of communication um, if it's not already happening internally? Probably it can, I guess, right? I think um, I think it can, and I think most people try to. Uh, this is my gut feeling. I haven't validated this, but um, is that they they say we they just say we want you to do this. Can you hear me? Okay, by the way. Yeah, you sound great. Thanks. Okay. All right. I put new headphones on. Um, if can, a lot of times when when I when I consult with companies, I see them saying, "Here's what you can do. Go do it." Mm -hmm. um, and that's a problem right there, um, because the instant that you expect somebody to go do it without training them um, is is going to still be a challenge because they still don't understand. Um, the second thing is they they still have written in their rules if you share the wrong thing you're going to be held reliable. So it's like, it's like, we want you to go share, but if you screw up, you're going to get fired. <laughs> so yeah. how am I going to do that? I'm just not going to share. Why would yeah. I share? Right. So, um, and, and there's no way to get around that except for two, way, two ways that I've come up with. One is that, um, that you put in a piece of software that gives them exactly what to share. Um, and they can edit it in their tone and their voice. And you say, here you go share these things. I know you want to be helpful. So we're going to feed you things that we know are, are okay. You can edit it for your tone of voice. Go. I know Number a piece two. of software that does that. <laughs> See, I'm like throwing softballs. Sorry. And then the second thing is um, 
The second thing is, um, is, is getting people around the table and actually practicing. Mm. Um, and I don't mean like virtually, like this is an in, in room experience where you actually get around and just like sales and customer support where, you know, you really need to get in, um, around the table and actually interact and throw examples at each other. So take turns, like I'll be the customer, you be the customer support. I'll be the customer, you be the CEO, whatever. And you just talk at each other and, and I, I throw out a problem and you try to do this without laughing, right? Cause at some point it can get pretty fun, but, but by practicing it back and forth and, and seeing what comes up, it be, it, it's more natural language. Um, sure. than templates and thoughts and ideas. And so um, practice practicing that around the table is, is the best way. Let's Can we talk about natural language a little bit? Because that's something obviously we really um, put front and center at, at lately as well. And like, how can, how can a company start doing that? Like, how can they put natural language first in their marketing? I should be turning that question on to you. Um, <laughs> that <laughs> you're, you are the, the queen of natural language. Um, so I, um, uh, so I'll answer first, then you can, you can answer as well on that one because okay. uh, we got to share that one. Um, so my, my thinking on natural language is, um, is it's kind of like, it's kind of like how, um, how we all, I perceive us all to write. Like when we first sit down and we write a blog post, um, or we write like, I don't know if you keep a diary every day or however you write. Um, if you sit down to actually write, then then it probably doesn't turn out crystal clear. Um, it's probably gibberish, or it doesn't sound right, or it's not um, it's not um, you know per, it's not professional. It's mm -hmm. it's not there yet. It needs to be edited. It needs to be expressed. So like how I how I write my blog posts is I go for a walk and then I speak them, and then when I come back, then I edit them. Right? You, yeah, you do the same. And right. um, and then and then that way I, it still has my voice. Um, and I'm just editing it for, um, you know, for, for grammar and things that don't make me look like, I don't know, you know, I'm not, I'm not good at sentence structure, <laughs> but, um, but it's the first time that you sit down to write that actually is the natural language. And so what I think we do is we correct our natural language and try mm -hmm. to make it, um, more grammatical, sound professional and so on and so forth. So we actually already have that built into us. It's true. Yeah, there's like we. I feel like we can tend to over overwrite. It's called overwriting, but like over polish it, you know. And then you're kind of stripping the human out of it at that point, right? Yeah. If you do too much, yeah, it's hard to back yeah, away. Totally. I mean, I love that you're speaking. It is so great because like it's hard to be. It's hard to be Emily Post if you're just you know saying this is how I feel, right? Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I do this, I do a similar thing. I, I always read, read what I'm writing out loud as I'm writing it. Cause it's so helpful. We talked about that with Ann Hanley a little bit. Um, and I think the why about it is sort of important to touch on here and, and maybe you can get there. You can talk about that a little bit because I think a lot of people understand what we're saying. They think it's valuable, but they also, I think, think it's a little hokey or like, what's the, you know, why should I take the time to do social really be social my social media and, and focus on organic social which is really what we're talking about here and focus on human like what's the effect and and is it worth my time um and you know since you're the king of that let's let's just touch on like why people should be thinking about what we're talking about and executing it and you're on mute suddenly wait brian i can't hear you can't hear you there you go am i back am i back oh okay Whew. Um, why people should be thinking about and executing on, um, on social and human specifically. So if you're going to spend yeah. the time to get better at something that we're talking about, like what's the benefits of, of being human in your social? Um, well, I, I would say that the benefit of being human in life is, is <laughs> in everything that you do is, is going to be a huge benefit. Um, so it's, I'll, I'll answer that in business, but I do think it, it really, it, it goes towards everything in life, right? Um, like no matter what, um, when you answer something in from your heart versus your head, um, it always comes across better and everyone wants to connect with you and connection is 
So when I wrote so, uh, Shareology, I did over 250 interviews um, with people of all walks of life. That's Brian's most... latest book, Shareology. <laughs> and um, it uh, it was really interesting because um, everyone, I took everyone's interviews. They were all mm -hmm. uh, moved into um, one of those cloud word clouds. Mm -hmm. um, and I took every script and threw it into that word cloud. And um, so I transcribed every, every script, moved into the word cloud. And the number one word that came up, the biggest word in the center was, was connection. Wow. And, um, and that, that my, my one question that I wanted to answer is why do people share? Mm -hmm. Um, and connection is, is the number one reason. Um, so back to your question about why do people want to, want to be human is because the more human you are, the more connection you make, which yeah. creates. And the more money. You make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The more money, the more, um, friendships, the more, whatever it is that you're looking for in life. Um, connection is what we all aim for. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Of course, as a CEO, that's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you should, as you yeah. should. Um, but and the human connection to it. Well, I mean, like, you know, I remember talking to my aunt um, who, you know, she was working for the National Disability Institute and working with the IRS and helping people live better lives through like tax help. Right. So here's somebody who's really impacting the world, you know, and I'd be like, God, what am I doing? <laughs> and she'd always you know, be like, you know, you're impacting the world too, just by being yourself and making those connections. And it sounds silly, but we've all seen a meme go by on Facebook of someone telling the story of a kid who was being bullied and then someone made friends with him and like how, you know, they, who knows, raised $50 million for someone else who had cancer or some kind of connection like that. Right. And it's those little teeny things um that happen all the time and so you don't i feel like you don't see the um the benefits sometimes right right away when you're sharing when you're connecting sometimes you do but um you have to be you have to put in for it you have to like be like this is what i'm going to do and commit to doing it right yeah totally um you well it i mean that's the committing to something is um uh, that, that, that's, that's a leadership quality. I think, um, you know, that's what everybody needs is, you know, we, you and I, we've talked about this before about having a stake in the ground and, um, and giving everybody, you know, one thing, one, one thing that we're all pointed toward and heading towards that. It's kind of like that Gandalf stake in the ground when he, he puts something down and all of a sudden like lightning flies from everywhere. And you're like, Oh my God. And he's like, we will go forward to the castle. And, and everyone is like, let's go to the castle. <laughs> right. We know where all we're all going, you know? And so um, it's the same, same kind of thinking, I think, um, in, in anything that we do and everywhere. Like when you look at companies and you look at, uh, at the person, the, the evangelist who is heading up the, the company or the person that you're thinking of, like if I were to say, you know, um, if I were to say Tesla, you would say Elon, Elon Musk, <laughs> yeah. right? Or, you know, if I were to say Apple, then you'd say um, either Steve Jobs or whoever the new guy is, Tim Cook. So, so you have all these, you have all these um, evangelists and the evangelists who we look to outside of the company. The reason that we look at them is because there are Gandalfs. And they have put a stake in the ground. They said, this is where we're heading. This is what we're doing. So they've almost brought us, the customer, along for the ride. At the same time, they're bringing internally their employees along for the ride by, by, by making that claim, by saying this is what we are going to achieve. We will be in space by 2025. or We will you know, be on Mars. Like They're sticking that in the ground, and that's what we're going to do. Yeah, I mean, of course, you do that all the time, and you have 350,000 social followers to prove it. Um, <laughs> which is amazing. But I think one of the things that you do best in your ability to lead others to share, let's call it that, is um, by sharing yourself, obviously, so leading by example. And I've noticed that um, you actually give permission to the people around you to follow along suit in that way. It's not just, it's more than leading them, right? It's sort of like this, a door is opening and you're, you're welcoming, them, welcoming them into the world of sharing 
along with you by being, you know, human by pointing out the crazy dots on your chest or um, doing a comedy club routine or whatever it is. So. Yeah, or uh, doing all kinds of Gaylord Fokker stuff, <laughs> um, yeah. which which is my life. Um, thank you for that. I yeah. um, I think well, first of all, I think you do the same, and um, and I think that that um, it there's that that's an interesting thing. I hadn't actually like the way that you said open the door for them. I I I think that I. Um, I get great drive out of seeing someone else, um, like opening up when they haven't before. Mm -hmm. And as Brian Fanzo says, they push the damn button right. and they go online and you see them like go, well, that was fun. Oh my God. I want to do that again. That like, all it took was just that one time. And they're like, Oh my God, this is going to be so fun. And then the, the repercussions of that it, are huge. Um, you know, people watch and they're like, yes, I want the behind the scenes. I want to see what actually goes on inside of this company or in, inside of your head. Um, and, 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 and kind of, you know, unveil that shroud of mystery and see what actually is happening. I love that. I really do. Yeah, I do too. And it's, I think there's, there's a confidence involved and we just have a few more minutes, but like, maybe you could touch on this for everybody. Um, because in order to, to be the Sherry, you've got to, um, you know, you have to got to put your big boy pants on big girl pants on. Right. It's to, it takes some courage. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, and you have to have a topic and then you're thinking about, do I have to script? And then you're thinking about, do I have to, um, how do I, the technology itself, will it work? Right. Um, there's a lot going on in your head when it first happens. Um, uh, and it, it sounds like you're like getting through your virginity, which is not the case. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if courage was involved there, but. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of barriers. <laughs> and there uh, we go. But, um, <laughs> so human uh, h2h man we're doing it <laughs> so yeah anyway with the quick minute that we we have left i think don't i mean it's it's hard for me to say don't think about all that and just do it um but it really is that simple like actually just turn your phone on and and just have like one point and speak for 30 seconds like don't go on for, for five minutes. Don't think you have to go on for 30 minutes. Um, if you're putting about putting out your first blog post, um, then be human about it and say, this is my first blog post. Um, I'm, I'm really trying hard and I want to start doing this. Like tell everybody that, um, tell everyone, this is my first video. Tell everybody, this is my first, whatever, and let them do that and be human about it. And then it won't be so hard. It's true. Yeah. And it's amazing. They'll, they'll join in to lift you up. So um, cause it's contagious. Like we were talking about earlier. Okay. So we have to wrap up, which is hard because I think we could learn a lot more from you. Um, and so thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for Brian having Kramer. me. Yeah. Brian Kramer, everybody. Whoa. Um, <laughs> <laughs> BrianKramer.com is where you can learn more about him and we are try lately.com. Um, that's, that's the company that we were talking about that can help you share more and be human. And we love to um, meet you. Of course, we're really into our customers and we like to know a lot about them. So not in a creepy way. It's cool. I promise. Um, we'll have another interview coming up soon. And so we're looking forward to um, scheduling that and letting you guys know more about that. It's actually one of Brian's key gigs here at lately because he's the man. And um, yeah, any oh. got a last, a last parting sentence for anybody that you would like to share? A last parting sentence. Oh man. Um, I'll, I'll just say sharing is caring. How about that? It's that simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's money involved and it's good. <laughs> also, so. We complete each other. <laughs> we <do. laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Thanks.